For the fourth time in a little more than a year, SpaceX launched a test mission of its massive Starship rocket from Starbase. The launch pushed the vehicle towards its goal of being a fully reusable rocket. Similarly to the previous three launches, Flight 4 did not include a payload and flew a suborbital trajectory. Unlike the preceding missions, Flight 4 saw a soft splashdown of the Super Heavy Booster 11 and of the Starship Upper Stage Ship 29. On Wednesday, SpaceX stacked the Ship 29 on top of Booster 11 to create the 121 TOS Me Starship rocket. Let's dive into the details of this flight and see what went wrong and what was achieved. Before we delve deeper, please remember to subscribe to our channel for future updates on the Starship and SpaceX's other groundbreaking achievements. The countdown to the launch began early in the morning, with the launch window opening at 7 a.m. local Texas time. The preparations included the propellant loading, with liquid methane and liquid oxygen being pumped into both the booster and the Starship. The final checks by the SpaceX flight director verified that everything was ready for the launch. As the countdown reached zero, the Raptor engines ignited, and the Starship lifted off from the launch pad at SpaceX's Starbase in Boca Chica, Texas. The ascent was smooth, demonstrating significant improvements in propulsion and stability. The vehicle passed through the maximum dynamic pressure or max-Q without issues, a critical point in any rocket launch where aerodynamic stress on the vehicle is at its peak. This phase had caused problems in previous flights. Interestingly, during this recent flight, the stage separation occurred as planned. The Super Heavy booster, equipped with 33 Raptor engines, completed its job and detached from the Starship. After stage separation, the Super Heavy booster performed a controlled descent. The booster aimed for a soft splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico, executing a landing burn to slow its descent. This marked an important step in SpaceX's goal of reusing the booster, although it still splashed down rather than being recovered on land. The Starship continued its journey on its own. It reached space and then began its controlled descent toward a planned splashdown in the Indian Ocean. During its descent, the Starship faced intense heat and pressure. The upgraded thermal protection system was put to the test, and the data collected from this phase would be crucial for future missions. The vehicle's descent was carefully monitored, and engineers paid close attention to the behavior of the heat shields and other structural components. The flight ended in a controlled splashdown in the Indian Ocean. The only problem with this launch was one of Starship's flaps clearly suffering burn-through damage during descent. Live camera views showed the heat shield on the flap burning away, sending debris across the camera's view. This debris eventually led to the camera lens cracking, which significantly hampered the visual feed of the descent. This flight was incredibly successful, especially when compared to the third flight. During Flight 3, the upper stage began to roll uncontrollably, preventing the vehicle from performing a relight of one of its six Raptor engines. However, thanks to its ability to connect to the Starlink satellite internet network, another part of SpaceX's business, the rocket was able to stream back high-definition camera views showing its re-entry through a blanket of plasma. According to SpaceX, the lack of attitude control resulted in an off-nominal entry, with the ship experiencing much larger-than-anticipated heating on both protected and unprotected areas. The most likely root cause of the unplanned roll was determined to be clogging of the valves responsible for roll control. SpaceX has since added additional roll control thrusters on upcoming Starships to improve attitude control redundancy and upgraded hardware for improved resilience to blockage. Onboard cameras on the Starship upper stage, flown during Flight 3, showed the vehicle surrounded by plasma as it re-entered the atmosphere on March 14, 2024. Meanwhile, the Super Heavy booster from the last flight also prematurely shut down six out of 13 Raptor engines used during the boost back burn, which remained offline when it attempted to perform a landing burn. According to SpaceX, the booster had lower than expected landing burn thrust when contact was lost at approximately 462 meters in altitude over the Gulf of Mexico and just under seven minutes into the mission. 
the most likely root cause for the early boost-back burn shutdown was determined to be continued filter blockage, where liquid oxygen is supplied to the engines, leading to a loss of inlet pressure in engine oxygen turbo pumps. Now, with the success of Flight 4, Musk teased ahead to an ambitious milestone for Flight 5, catching the super-heavy booster using the launch tower's so-called chopsticks. Flight 4 was an important mission not only for SpaceX, but also for NASA. The rocket will take center stage when the agency embarks on the Artemis 3 mission, which is currently targeting September 2026. Lisa Watson Morgan, the manager of the Human Landing System program, and her team continue to work alongside SpaceX to understand the development of the rocket that will serve as the moon lander for the yet-to-be-named astronauts of the Artemis 3 and Artemis 4 missions. She spoke with Spaceflight Now in the lead-up to the Flight 4 launch. The path to Flight 4 was filled with improvements from previous missions. SpaceX's commitment to iterative development was evident as they addressed the issues encountered during Flight 3. The unexpected role of the upper stage during Flight 3, caused by clogged valves, prompted the addition of more roll control thrusters in future starships. These adjustments aim to enhance redundancy and prevent similar occurrences. The re-entry phase of Flight 3 was particularly challenging. The upper stage experienced extreme heating, leading to significant damage despite the vehicle's protective tiles. This prompted SpaceX to reassess its thermal protection strategies, focusing on ensuring the integrity of the vehicle during the intense re-entry process. Flight 4 aimed to build on these improvements. The mission's objective was to achieve a deeper re-entry into the atmosphere, pushing the Starship to endure higher levels of thermal stress. Despite some tiles being lost and a damaged flap, the mission provided valuable data that will inform future designs and refinements. The Super Heavy Booster's performance in Flight 3 also highlighted areas for enhancement. The premature shutdown of 6 out of 13 Raptor engines during the boost back burn was a critical issue. SpaceX identified the root cause as filter blockage in the liquid oxygen supply, which led to a loss of inlet pressure in the oxygen turbo pumps. To address this, SpaceX implemented improved propellant filtration capabilities in future Super Heavy boosters, ensuring more reliable engine performance. The anticipation surrounding Flight 5 is palpable, especially with the ambitious goal of catching the Super Heavy booster using the launch tower's chopsticks. This innovative approach aims to reduce the reliance on ocean landings and streamline the recovery process. If successful, it would represent a significant leap forward in SpaceX's quest for full reusability. Flight 4's success is not only a milestone for SpaceX, but also a critical step in NASA's Artemis program. The Starship rocket is slated to play a pivotal role in the Artemis 3 mission, which aims to return humans to the moon. The collaboration between SpaceX and NASA underscores the importance of the Starship's development in achieving the broader goals of lunar exploration. SpaceX's orbital launch mount at Starbase, which previously suffered significant damage during the first test flight, demonstrated resilience thanks to newly installed protective measures. Following the initial flight, the pad had a massive crater due to the absence of a flame trench, a common feature in other launch sites designed to deflect exhaust plumes. To mitigate further damage, SpaceX installed a water-cooled steel plate beneath the launch mount, which successfully protected the pad during Flight 4. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.